saying that it is showing module not found while reading the weather.csv file can be there. So <clears throat> maybe you check your file path or something, please, and check carefully that you have the correct delimiters and other stuff. Other than that. What the difference is set in dictionary? Totally first class itself is the first class question. Set is an unordered collection of items similar to the dictionary, and for defining the set, you will have to use the term uh, defining the set. <clears throat> dictionary has a key and a fair value, which is not in the case of set. And if you have these things, uh, these sort of questions, please ask them on the Slack. He is be able to help you because this is already covered in lecture one, something. Okay, so we're using dictionary method. Can I assign different values to different keys? Yes, definitely. That is the purpose. Okay, so Gaurav Berg is here and he will be there to help you with the questions. So, uh, should I start? How many people are here? Right, so many of you are here and uh, so just reply by thumbs up, probably, if you are fine with me to go ahead. Yeah, okay. And <clears throat> happy Dashera to all of you guys. I know it's, uh, I think it's today or tomorrow, tomorrow, I think, right? And so today you might be it's still studying today. It means that either you guys are serious or you guys are just sitting at home due to COVID. You can't do anything about it. There are only two options that I can visualize by you attending to this. Second option is more feasible. Yeah, and the third and third could be like either you guys have already binge watched Mirzapur. The people who are asking the lecture once questions, I think you were watching two days Mirzapur only and not did anything. So <laughs> I would request you to go to the lectures and you know cover all those uh, stuff. Okay. Additionally, uh, you guys are here, so I will ask you to go to Slack very quickly and uh, uh, click on the poll and ask, I will ask you to respond yourself because total only 53 people have voted till now. So it's just two slots, uh, two files away uh, on the top of you, you will see a poll which is things you learn in lecture one and two. Just quickly go on that and please uh, do your poll. As soon as you do it, just show a thumbs up to me, please, here. Yeah. Uh, guys, there is one more poll uh, for the class, uh, tomorrow class, Sunday. So if you don't want class or if you want, then you can uh, mark as per your choice. First, go for the poll one, which is things you learned yeah. in lecture. And show me a thumbs up if you've done it.
Okay, so I'll go ahead. I hope you guys have done it. I can see still people have not done it, 57 only. So, <clears throat> so here now we are going to cover today uh, the basic distribution and other stuff. Tomorrow, if we are having a class, it is going to be very important because we are going to cover uh, the concept behind the eigenvalue matrix and other stuff. So, uh, for principal component analysis. So I hope that you guys are already are aware of linear algebra. So if you're not, I'll try to explain it uh, in a very basic terms, but uh, for that even you require a linear algebra knowledge. So we can look at that. So today I have already dropped the CSV file, which is haberman.csv, which was there in the Slack. So please uh, download uh, both the files, today's notebook and from this lag and then we can go ahead. So today the objective is to classify the new patient whether he belongs to survive or dead or died based on the following given data set. Status one belongs to the type of patient where those patients survive for more than five years and status two for the patient who didn't survive for more than five years. Okay. So same way we have used uh, pandas, we have used numpy, matplotlib. And since you guys asked me in the last lecture, of Seaborn. So I tried to do things with the Seaborn today in the lecture itself so that you will have a more, uh, you, you can do things with Seaborn as well as a practice. Okay. Okay. So, so as soon as you uh, do this first uh, cell, you will be able to see the uh, same thing, which is the data frame, which is you have age, year, nose, and status. So you have given A's, given years, nodes, and status. And then you do, so now, if everybody has been able to do it, which is importing the, or you're downloading it, just show me a quick thumbs up on the Zoom. Four five people only did it. What what we have if we have to do a joint late. So if you join late, just download today's lecture files from the Slack. Open it. We are on the first cell itself. We are trying to analyze this new data set and try to do different distribution plots. And we'll discuss a bit about them as well. So if you have done that, please show me thumbs up everywhere. Guys, I request you all to please uh, unmute. I mean, when it, it is needed and then make it interactive. Then only it will be a interesting class. Okay, so this is the first cell. So we have this data set. So I don't run this one for now. Line for uh, this line, just go to this one and you have columns here. So the columns are as, I, as we can see here, are A's, year, nodes and status, right? And the top type is object. So now we say that, okay, we count the value. So this counts actually count the unique values in a specific column. Okay. So we, once we do that, we are able to see that for one, there are 20, 225 values and for two, there are 81 values. So counting the uniqueness in this column itself status. Now I just want to convert uh, the uh, status of one to survive and two to die. Okay. So I just use this one as we have done in the last few classes. And then you will be able to do that. And as soon as you convert it, now you see the one and two will be replaced with surviving deaths. Okay. <clears throat> now, so I hope everybody has been able to complete this one. So they're just counting the specific count and we have done uh, quite amount of things in the last 
session for doing the uh, data stuff. So now we are trying to look at the 2D scale plot or the pair plots. So bivariate is actually present two variables. Univariate is one variable and multivariate is multiple variables. It's very simple as that. So now we are trying to see like what a scatter plot looks like. So we are trying to plot age versus year. Okay. So we draw, try to draw, uh, plot the kind of the plot is scatter. X is your year, Y is your age, and then you're trying to plot. So this is the plot that you got. But this plot is very much ambiguous. You can't interpret anything from it. Okay. So now we go, so this is the same observation that we are unable to distinguish between survive and die patients. patients. Now, uh, I have written observations here, but I, after this one, I will be sharing your data set where I'm not given, uh, will be observing the distribution, but that data set, all of you are going to use to create your own uh, notebooks in progression with the class that we have done and create the final output of that in which we will do modeling and other stuff. The guy who will have the best modeling and everything uh, will get their course fees back <laughs> and maybe some goodies. So that will be the best selection of somebody who did the job. The data set I will be sharing today. So, so uh, I'll make some difficult data set as well. There are two data sets. So one numerical that you will be saying, the other will be signals. So now here we have, uh, so, the, <coughs> so now we are trying to use here Seaborn. So as we have done uh, PLT, which is map plot left, now trying to use a Seaborn. So Seaborn has style as white grid, which is a background. Then facet grid is again a method uh, in the Seaborn. You can check uh, online, which is Seaborn uh, dot facet grid, and it will give you the explanation of facet grid along with its argument. However, just to brief you, HMDF is your, uh, the first variable uh, argument is your data frame. Then this is the hue. Hue is for changing color in the specific, uh, choosing different colors according to different unique values. For example, here we have two statuses, which is one and two, which is survive and death. So it is using two different colors. If it would be three, then we use three different colors, four and four different colors similarly. So hue is status. This can be changed to any other variable as well, and that will be represented according to that. Then the size is six, which is the size of this grid, which you are seeing here, okay? So which will map the scatter of age versus year, and then it will add the legend, which is here that you have seen here, okay? And then you try to show here. So as soon as I run this, you are able to see the survival digit in the more better format. It was one unicolor here. It is different colors here, but the axis has changed. That's the only difference, okay? So now looking at this again, you are unable to say that who survived and who did not because everything is intermingled together. So if the separation cannot be made, okay? So then again, observation here is difficult to say more than information regarding survival status from the plot. Majority of operations are performed on, on the people of age between 40 to 66. So the majority of data here lies Then again, we try something else, which is, uh, again, if this or these all remain same, the data frame, the hue is the status and the size is six. And then you try to map the scatter plot, which in nodes versus the year, which in nodes is again, one of your column name, if you remember. Okay, versus year. So you're trying to plot that. So year will be on the Y axis, node will be on the X axis, and then add legend, and you should get this plot. Okay. Now again, these all plots are overlapping, so it is difficult to say about the status. So more, <clears throat> so they are the different years. So you can see that from 1960 to 1966, that is the major of the operations. Now we are going to see this different plotting. So we are trying to do the binary plots here. So we are trying to plot every uh, corresponding. So node versus age, then again, we got it, okay. So by this time, we have plotted the corresponding uh, values for the two different variables and try to see 
what is basically what can we see from here so we can see that more data points are concentrated at node 0 so all of this evaluation can be made just by using the simple scatter plot and i have used uh, my plot table number of stuff now we'll go to the pair plot but give you 2 minutes to try it on your own and then you can go ahead will be better if you screen font size as much as possible. What do you want to screen font? You want to need to increase the font size. Roll of C1. Roll of C1 is saying it's uh, similar to Matplotly. We have to for the visualization as well. Okay, I thought that this is big enough i'm like i can see that even on my ipad so is it good now are you guys using it on mobile phone Because the more I increase, the more for me to also set it, fit it on one screen. Okay. <clears throat> so now we go ahead and we try to do the pair plot. So now in the pair plot, what we do is we try to get the variables what are there and try to plot them against. Okay. So for example, age nodes and A, so on X and Y axis now, so pair, you can imagine a pair plot as an X and Y axis distribution again. So on Y axis also, you will have age nodes and A, and similarly on Y uh, X axis, and then on Y axis also, you will have age nodes and A, where you will be seeing as one of them to be uh, X of the uh, other to the Y, okay? So once we do this plot, we are able to get the whole information here. So now this plot is for age versus so this is for node versus age, this is for year versus age, then node versus year. So we can compare the graph that we have plotted before. Okay, so we have all these these plots, and then this is for age versus year. So we can maybe go back up and we can also look at the plots that we did for binary and try to compare it to them. Okay, so it is like uh, we have all the uh, information there in a uh, single uh, pair plot. So combining, so this can this you can do with all the possible variables that are there and they, they will be generated in a single plot. So by this method, you will be able to generate the pair plots. However, this doesn't need to be there, which is the diagonals one. You can ignore these figures. I'm not trying to infer anything from here, which is just a distribution how long it is going up in terms of where the year lies, where is the nodes are basically peaked at. Okay for the survive and for the die, similarly for age as well. Now we try to do the univariate analysis, which is the diagonal thing that you saw, generally it will be corresponding to the univariate here. So univariate is simple, looking at the one variable and looking at how it behaves to the uh, for, for one single variable, okay? So we have univariate uh, analysis that is, again, we're using the C-bond for basically the same uh, attribute which is status and the size this is and then we are trying to do the distance plot here for the nodes so so distribution plot so we are looking at the distribution here so this is like you can see the histograms right and this is for the survive and this is for the die you have all this uh, this information plotted here so 
So we can found more overlapping in the histogram, but one thing is that as node count increases, we can see the survived people density is decreasing and there is an increase in died people density. So as soon as the nodes are going up. We're just trying to do the different plots and trying to infer knowledge from just the plots. So this is the observation that we have from the uh, histograms here. Now, this histogram will be important because this is like, uh, so you can also imagine that kind of different plot using the kernel distance, uh, kernel, kernel density estimation as well, KD plots, and that will show you the distribution of the plot itself. Now here we have, uh, okay, now we try to use the uh, status and then for the age, and again you saw for, you see for the age of the survive and the die people, from 30 to 35 age group, only survive patients are present, which you are looking at here. And survive patient concentration is more from 30 to 40 when compared to the die. See here, which is the blue one. Okay, now here we have the more concentration of died people, but died people are only status are present after 70 years of age as well. Now we try to do the, again, uh, the distance walk for the years. So this is, we are doing for a single, single variable. You saw it for the node, you, you're seeing it for the age. Then now we are going for the year. And then again, in the year distribution, we see the maximum data. All of the data is actually present from this area, which is from there around 58 to 59 to 69 somewhere, right? So we can't get any clues of the status. Uh, since there is more overlapping, more concentration of diet class between 1963 to 1966. Okay, so 63 to this point, to 66, somewhere this point, the concentration, high Okay, so now we are looking, so this is the another important point that uh, we will be covering, which is the box plot. Okay, so just a second, I'll give you two minutes to implement everything. Okay, so now I'll go to the box plot. So here, I'll just write it here. So, for the box plot, if you look at something, let's take uh, some data sets, not from this one. So let's take a random data set here, which is, uh, let's take time as an axis, or so let's take here, minutes <clears throat> okay and we try to let's say we start with zero ten thirty fifty seventy okay so we're trying to what So we are trying to see here is in the box plot, we are trying to see the actually using the box plot, the whole purpose is to see the distribution of the data. Okay, so where does all the data fit in? So we can look at the median of the data and its complete distribution as well. Okay, 
So let's say that we had some data set of, uh, uh, let's say, boys and girls. Okay. The time, the minimum time to get ready to go to a party. That's our objective. So let's say that we have some data set of uh, boys where their mean time to get ready is say 30 minutes and then it takes maybe <clears throat> and, the, and the variation is so 30 minutes is there let's say the median time and let's say that their uh, maximum time of some of uh, us for example let's say that i take 50 minutes to get ready and then one of the guys who let's say don't take shower and then get ready in 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. So this is that we are. So what we are looking at here is we are looking at the total data distribution. Okay. So how the data has been distributed over a specific, uh, in, in a specific dimension so that we can see where all the data majorly lies. So in, in the box plot terms, we call this like, for example, this will be your median of the data and this will be your upper quarter upper quartile and this is your lower i'll come to this quartile function <clears throat> okay so and then let's say that some of the guys take 85 minutes to get ready right and some of them takes two minutes so this becomes your variation which can be treated after beyond this point you can treat them like okay so this is like the maximum value that I would like to consider. And after this one, anybody who is getting ready, I will not treat them as a boy. So there are many less, less values. They can be treated as an outlier or something. Now here only, let's say that we have girls data. So not to be biased here, but let's take that the mean of the girls to get ready comes at this point, which is 40. And this box plot would actually shift in the same fashion to front if they are <clears throat> proportion is same, right? So we try to look for the time taken by them to get ready and look at the distribution of the data itself. Now, the very important part is looking at these things. So one is the median, as I've told you very clearly, that in the middle we draw the median. So all the generally plots that you will be doing will be basically towards this one. So let's say that you have one median. Now, what does a quartile mean? Is like quartile is quart. So quart means four. So dividing the whole data set into four equal parts. So if it is 100% of the data, you will have 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, right? So this is the total quartile range, okay? So now when we try to cover here, so the lower quartile is the 25%, so the upper quartile is 75%, okay? So this is what we are trying to cover here in the whole this area. <clears throat> and then we call for the bit of a variation here as well, which is let's say that the minimum value, minimum value, which is not an outlier and then the maximum value, which is not an outlier as well. So we are calling for those values here. Okay, so now to do the same plot we have here, which is the box plot status, just we use the uh, c one dot box plot status nodes and the data frame is data frame. The try what we are trying to do is the nodes uh, versus the status. So we are trying to see the node distribution in the survived data and the diet data. So we can see that the patients who have nodes zero are mostly found in survived where patients having four to five nodes mostly die, which is you're looking at this one data right, right here. So this line, and this is your four to, this is your zero, sorry, not this line. And then you are also looking at these points, which can be treated as an outlier. Come on, this iPad. So T 
these points can be treated as outliers okay if they are going uh, beyond our quartile range okay so uh, let's say that we i say that uh, okay guys so you have to uh, calculate you have to look at the data you have to look at the data distribution also and if your uh, if your values are going beyond let's say uh, uh, maximum value which is the maximum value in the data and uh, going maybe let's say that anything which has more than uh, let's say more than what should I say like three times of standard deviation then you can treat it as uh, the outliers okay so because in the at more, almost uh, we are trying to cover uh, in the data set itself looking at the medium so 25 percentile is your uh, is the minimum data that you're looking at which is the minimum quarant, uh, quartile the 75 percent is the maximum Now, when we look at this uh, analysis, so patient, once again, so when we are trying to do the box plot here, so we see that the nodes zero are mostly found in survived, and there were a patient having four to five nodes are mostly in the dive. Similarly, we try, now I'll just erase these things, so keep on popping up. So, Box plot is just, it's a very important tool actually. So to, to see the whole overall data distribution, it is very important. Uh, there are different plots that you will be uh, going to do, which is uh, there is box plot, and then there is a uh, kernel distance, uh, density estimation. Then there is violin plot, and other uh, violin plot we'll cover anyway, quickly. So the same thing now, if you look at the status in the terms of age, now you see here your median lies here for both of the data and then this is the upper quartile and this is lower right? so almost same mean in the status one and status two so it is hard to find at the patient of different categories so even if when we looked at the girls versus the boys getting up dressed with time let's say that the median of both of them were same and the data just will remain almost same so there will be not much of an info, uh, information uh, to be to be extracted from those right so there can be we cannot uh, differentiate much on the data set so it means that the status one and status two have to find the patient of different categories now we look at the in the terms of year same we have the same like age group it's hard to distinguish people from the patient from status one and status two now this is violin plot okay so it is similar thought as we have seen it so it's like making your fancy fancy plot in the terms of it now if you look at this violin plot very carefully so at the center it looks like a box plot okay so it is a box plot and the box plot distribution which was going and this is trying to cover the all the data distribution as well okay so that's why it is going to it is trying to represent it as the violin the shape one more thing which is very important to be visualized from here that if i split this violin it is actually symmetrical this part and this part okay so this part and this part are symmetrical so it is just for the so one part can also do the job okay so one part can also do the job now even if you look at this plot so just try we'll try to look at from this violin plot we'll go later to you know plot this so if you look at just one part of it which is the top part okay so if we look at the top part it somewhere look like a histogram distribution that we looked at okay survive in the years and the similarly so whatever histogram that we did it is somewhere similar to those histogram you see here so it is actually a distribution plot that we are able to uh, show here so if you want to understand actually so if, if i if i tell you in a very very fundamental way that how can you uh, understand the violin plot so you can use one thing is 
you have one part which is the box plot obviously okay so this is your box plot and then you have one part as the kernel kernel density estimation if you merge both of them together let's say and if you just cut this half cut it half and you will have this line okay so this becomes your distribution this is your median this is your going upward backward so this becomes your violin if i just reverse now mirror this part here so th this is generally if i tell you very fundamentally so this is the uh, information behind the violin plot okay so now let's try to look at how to plot uh, a violin plot and there is one thing that i will ask you to try now is something let me see okay so for doing the violin plot we are trying to look at the violin plot with the x is the status and y is the nodes and data frame is the hmdf and you try to do the plot so you got to first survive and die as well because your x is the status okay now same thing we are trying to do here is for again status versus the year and doing the same thing so it is like the year distribution plot that we have seen and then we put survive and the die okay now we are doing for the status and the age and we are going to go we are going to get that now since you guys have covered till this point now and also as i said very clearly that this is just a split thing isn't it because this part is actually a replica of this part it is just a mirror image so the question can be can i remove this part because this might be useless it just looks good and i combine this information here can i do that so yes we can do that so what we can use that is then we will use split is equal to true i have not done this in this uh, in this specific cell because i want you to try right now this thing which is trying to combine the information into together so using split is equal to true maybe you can just <clears throat> Uh, try to uh, solve it yourself by looking at sns dot violin plot and split functionality is equal to true and then you will need to merge both of them. Okay, so I'm giving you five minutes to try this out. As soon as you do it, please show me a thumbs up.
Oh God. So sorry, I muted myself. Okay. So uh, has everybody done it? If you have done it, just play, uh, show me a thumbs up. I can know one, uh, one girl has done it. Anybody else here? Right. Other people who are struggling with it. So would you like uh, Mehek to go ahead and talk us through how did you do it and what did you understood from it? Meg Bunsen, if I'm correct by your name. Can, can you guys hear me? Somebody? Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Yes, sir. Okay. So the people who showed thumbs up, can anybody unmute themselves and talk me through how did you do it? Wow. Everybody's playing bluff with me. All right. So let's, I'll just show you right here. So let's say that I want the uh, to, to the uh, value plot to be distributed. So let's say that we have two things, which is age and the status. So status is telling you survive and die. So what I will do here is I'll look at age versus maybe let's say year. And then I change Q to status. And then I make Split is equal to, sorry, true. Okay, and I do it. Now you see, it's not more, no more violent. <laughs> okay, so you have you have the status of survival and the die changing with respect to year and age. So it's accommodating for both of them. Okay, so this is the way you can split it. You can do, if you just want to see one part of it, you can still do, let's say that if I just do here status. And then I do it. So you see only half of it, okay? For both of them, for survival and stuff. But let's not do that. And then we go for, so we have the two different variations here, right? So now we are trying to uh, distribute the uh, data frame into two different parts, which is status uh, of survive and status of die. There are many things that I want to tell you here in the terms of this all, uh, you know, explanation of these plots, what is it going to be. But we'll have to wait it for tomorrow because tomorrow I'll try to cover the basic mathematics behind, uh, let's say, um, principal component analysis and other stuff so that you are, uh, you are aware of uh, eigenvalues and other stuff. So we can just go ahead. So we are looking at mean. So we understand mean variance and standard deviation. So let's say that you have uh, to calculate the mean of the data, you calculate mean for the variation variance, you will have the distribution of the data and the standard deviation. So you look at for calculating mean. Okay, so HM1 is not defined, I'll just run it. And then we have the HM1. So we got the mean corresponding to age, year, nodes. Similarly, we have standard deviation for them. And then we have the median for them. So the observation that we are making from this one is more patient having age around 52 are in survive category, whereas having age around 53 are in die category. By using nodes, we examined more data. Patient having a zero node are mostly in the survive category and having more than one are in die category. As the more part of the age and ER are overlapping, we cannot tell more information by using them, okay? So then we have the median, percentile, and quantile. Quantile, I just explained to you. So percentile, we tell what percentage of the points are less than that percentile and how many points are more than that percentile. You all of us have been always fighting for the highest percentile, whether it be IAM exams or IIT exams. So we, I, hope, I, understand, I know that you guys understand percentile much better. Median is just trying to find the middle point, and then you have the quantile, which is the distribution into four equivalent areas of the points. Right. So this is what I uh, did it for the today's lecture. 
And, uh, and then other things that I have is the new data set that we are going to do it, okay? So instead of going there, so what, so we have seen on this data. Now I want you guys, as you have already a previous data set from the last session, you can, and every time we are using, we are using a new data set. So by this method, you will be able to try on different data sets. So I'd like you to do the same presentations and make an analogy on yourself that what do you understand from the data? As in the last data, we have many variables, so you can try that out, okay? So that would be a homework for the for tonight. Additionally, I'll drop on this slack, uh, PGANC or Prayag, you guys, either of you can make a new channel, which will be a competition sort of thing, right? A new channel. It will be locked again as machine learning lecture. So only people who are participating here will be able to do that. And in that, I'll drop a new data set with a problem statement. And as we are going forward, we will be implementing everything on a completely new data set and try to model something at the end of the uh, lecture. And then we will be able to see whoever did the best, will get their money back as well as some of the goodies. Okay, the best one. Maybe if you guys are getting certificate, it will be mentioned the best one in the certificate itself out of the 188 candidates here. Okay, so any points anybody has? It hasn't quite quite class today, I don't know. I think many students are even off, which is maybe it can be festivals, but So new channel will be there for the competition. I'll drop in the information and the data set there as well. Can you guys unmute yourself and at least say bye? <laughs> I don't know if you guys are there even. Hi, Sajid. Um, I had a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so in the conclusions that we're drawing at the end, if you can scroll down a bit, um, the last statement said that um, yeah, the fourth one says that as more parts of age and year are overlapping, you cannot tell more information by using them. I couldn't actually catch that, if you can elaborate. It's like if two of the variables are giving you the similar information, then just by using both of the variables, you can't interpret a new information. For example, let's say that you have apples and oranges, okay? And then you have the, very, and then you have the uh, things. No, let's take something the same color. Okay, so let's take that you have what are the same colors. Can you tell me two fruits with the same color? Let's say orange and carrots. Oh, but shape is different. I'm trying to look for something. It's similar. Let's say that Pears we and have oranges. yeah, we have green oranges and we have grapes, the green grapes. Okay, so okay. now we try. We have we have an option here which is round. Okay as well as we are looking at uh, color. Now, since both of them are very common to them and they will overlap in both of them, so either just by plotting both of them, we'll not be able to infer a lot of information. Similarly here, when we are trying to plot year versus the age, so when we try to do that, the information was when we did the scatter plot, you saw everything was intermixed, right? So when we do a scatter plot, we try to identify where, what are the variables that we can pick. So this is very important for the next one to reduce the dimension of the data and make the models not overfit or underfit. So let's say that we have age and year. So you saw, see here, so you have age and the year of all the data set. Now, here you have the age and year of the survive and die. Now, if it is completely overlapping each other, so even if I use a very huge polynomial function, it cannot be distinguished. Uh, it cannot be distinguished by the, these two variables, right? Just by looking at it, we can see that. So it means that the data is completely intermingled into each other, and we will not be able to separate them. So one thing is what we can learn from this one is maybe when you will. Uh, I think if you guys, if you are doing PhD or masters. Masters. Okay. So let's say that you're working on any data science problem, right? And you're not from a machine learning domain. Okay, let's say that you're not from the computing as I am on the machine learning domain, because in our case, we will not be asked to justify. But in some cases, like let's say that you are from, let's say any class, like uh, business or masters, then what, uh, or, or, or in some geothermal or something like that. 
So in that case is when you have different variables you're looking at and then you're trying to plot or interpret the information, you will be going to do the plots only. The modeling will come much, much later. Right. So the basic information they will ask you, even in the statistical presentation that you might do for a company in a terms of business, you will be able to do these plots only that how the data is distributed according to demographic, age or anything else. So it is very important to understand the plotting because this will be only useful in your uh, presentation and papers that you do probably if you're not from the computing background. Right. So can we say that uh, year and age are correlated highly? From... Okay, that's yes. Okay. You can you can say that, we have to check that, but maybe not. Just by looking at both of them, we can't say that they are highly correlated. We have to run, find the correlation. Uh, we'll have to draw the correlation uh, index between them and to see how much highly, how much correlated they are. But yeah, we can we can draw inference from that. From this inference, we can just say that these two information are completely overlapping. So until unless we do some, some sort of transformation on the data, we'll not be able to separate them out. Okay, so if they're overlapping, that doesn't necessarily translate to a correlation between them. We'll have to check for that. We'll have to check for that, yes. Right, okay. Thank you. It is not necessary because it can be different. For example, if something is, uh, our data is distributed into different planes, right? And if you look at from one specific point, they might look at, the projection might look at they're all overlapping, right? Mm -hmm. yes. so they're overlapping, so there will be some correlation between them, but I will not say that they're highly correlated. Right, okay. Thank you so much. Sure. Anyone else? So, okay then. So that is, that is it for today. Uh, tomorrow we have an important lecture. So I would ask you, if you guys can, that would be great, uh, just to try to understand uh, what eigenvalues are, or just brush up your, uh, you know, bit of information on matrices, which is like determinant of a matrices or everything. Yeah. I hope you remember it from your classes of uh, school. But we go chalte hain maashat pe. Kaha chalte hain? So yeah, so we will be covering uh, the. Uh, concepts of PCA. I wanted to cover the concept of PCA itself, but seems like many students are off. So I would not like to uh, repeat it again in the next class. That's why I would not cover it today. Okay, I hope that's fine for you. If you guys are ready, I can just take the theory of PCA itself. I don't think so. Is it for the next lecture? I wanted to discuss, actually, I wanted to discuss the theory today and then mathematical explanation tomorrow so that you guys can sleep over it. But it's okay, I think there are very, very less students today and I've got a message to back up as well, so. Right, okay, thank you. The council is asking me to stop. So maybe, I think there are not a lot of students today. Maybe everybody's celebrating. So I expect the same. So Prayag, it would be nice if you can have a poll on this, uh, on, 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 the, on the channel itself. Uh, because it would be nice if students are there tomorrow to understand the concept. Otherwise, they will read the YouTube video and just come up at a very random point to ask the mathematical concepts. Okay. Uh, okay. Today itself, uh, I will announce about the timing if you have any lecture tomorrow. And then I will add something uh, to the channel which uh, students need prior to know. Yeah. So tomorrow we are going to cover, we are going to cover PCA and other stuff. Okay. Okay. All right then. Okay, guys. Bye bye. Have a great day. Bye. Bye, sir. Bye. 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 Hello.